You're listening to LeaderCast, episode 162. Welcome to LeaderCast, Transforming Missions podcast with Tim Bias and Sarah Thomas, providing you with insights and resources you need to lead a movement of Jesus followers. Um, I, I really want to finish well, and I've, I've seen it in my own life. It's something that as you see the finish line approaching, sometimes people want to, you know, start to invest in what's next, start to think what it, sort of what's beyond. Um, and I do want to take serious, you know, the classes that I'm taking but also to be to continue to be present in um, the midst of this season uh, to to rise to whatever sort of those challenges, both in school and, and in ministry uh, that come up, because um, I don't want to write off the next 90 days or the next five months as just, oh, I'm looking towards the finish line. I'm trying to get to May. I'm trying to get to graduation because there's a lot that I believe God has in store for us in the early part of 2021, even though it will, you know, as we've mentioned and, and all experience, it will look different and, and it will be um, uncomfortable at times and it will be challenging, I'm sure. But my my hope is that, you know, as we as we move towards being able to hopefully uh, combat and, and battle against this virus, that 2021 will start to look different. Um, and that, that, you know, I'm, I'm excited for what those differences are going to look like. But but again, I want to, to be present in the now, be present in what I'm doing um, so that I can finish this season well. Today, we're having a conversation with Jay Kinsey. Jake is a student, a spouse, a friend, a son, a youth minister. Ah, the list goes on and on. Today we're having a conversation with Jake about staying focused on our goals and our priorities to achieve our purpose, even in the midst of competing demands. And so for those of you that are in school or are working towards finishing up a degree, or maybe you're just taking a class online for your own enrichment, I think you'll find something especially helpful in this episode. And even if you're not in any sort of formal education or training, you're going to hear Jake talk about his strengths, you're going to hear him talk about those competing demands, but listen closely. Because there's one thing that he mentions over and over again that we can all have, regardless of where we are at in life, whether we're in school, out of school, in training, out of training, whatever the case may be. And I'm going to make you listen to figure out what that is. As a reminder, you can find the show notes for this episode by going to transformingmission.org forward slash podcast, and you're looking for episode 162. As always, you can go directly to the episode at transformingmission.org forward slash 162, where you'll find show notes for this page along with the reflection questions that I offer at the end. Without any further wait, here's our conversation with Jay Kinsey. Jake, welcome to LeaderCast. Thank you so much for having me. Would you tell us who you are and what you get paid to do? Absolutely. So my name is Jake Hinsey, and I am the youth pastor at Church of the Savior down in the Montgomery, Cincinnati area in Ohio, which means I get paid to have great conversations with students about Jesus, but I also get paid to host pizza parties. Maybe not right now in the pandemic, but but I do love that duality part of my job, the, the fun mixed in with the, the depth and the seriousness. So as we focus on courageous leadership, I need to hear from you. What does being a courageous leader mean to you? I think being a courageous leader means the biggest thing I think that I've learned this year about courageous leadership is being willing to trust those around you. I think as much as we want to be able to do everything ourselves, we uh, obviously cannot. Um, and I think that we are we are designed, we are created by God to be in community. And I think that leadership um, is no exception. Um, I think that when yeah, leaders can trust those around them, can trust those that they are training up and trust those that they're working with, the kingdom shines a little bit brighter. Um, and But I think that does take a lot of courage because that means letting go of control, letting go of uh, doing things the way that I may have wanted to do them exactly myself. And that's not always easy. Well, I want you to know that that during 2021, we're focusing on different themes for courageous leaders. And the question we've been focused on is, what do courageous leaders need to know, 
uh, to do and to understand. And part of why we're having a conversation with you is that we say they need to understand and live out their purpose. And so you people are listening to us here in January, and January, is, the big theme is purpose. So for our conversation today, we'd like to focus on how your goals and priorities relate to your purpose in the midst of competing demands. So that's the focus of this conversation today. And we're really glad that you've joined us for this time as we have this conversation. Well, thank you. So knowing that you are serving in ministry with students, you are a seminary student, you are a spouse, you are a son, you are a friend, all of that to say you wear lots of wear lots of hats. How do you define your purpose? I think the short answer that I try to keep in front of me each day is, is it's my purpose to serve the Lord. And whatever that means for the day, whatever that means for the moment, my, my hope is that I will be uh, prepared for that. And that, I think that, that leads into ministry as well, uh, because as I guess in twofold, because I, I, in working with my students, I want to serve to, you know, to follow God's, you know, calling and, and sort of direction in, in what he's calling me to do and to be faithful to. But I also want to model that and to, uh, to, to sow that into my students as well, that they, they should seek to, uh, to follow God and to, yeah, to, to put sort of his, his leading um, as their, their top priority. Because I think from there, that orders a lot of other things in life. Is there anything that's different in the ministry that differs from your purpose that you, I'm going to say it this way, you get to do, <laughs> but it doesn't really align with your purpose? That question really might come from having served as a youth pastor <laughs> before. <laughs> I think it, yes and no. Um, I think I would consider myself to be. Uh, somewhat a, a serious person. Um, I think that I, you know, I love the, the, let's dive into scripture. Let's have the, you know, the small group conversation. And so as, as silly as it may sound, sometimes it is the, it, it does come back to my purpose and recognizing that sometimes the fellowship pieces, sometimes the fun pieces are, are also necessary. Um, sometimes the dodgeball tournaments and sometimes the, you know, the, the things where we may not be explicitly talking about Jesus, those are still, those still build into the discipleship process. And so, and, and again, you know, that sounds very silly that woe is me. I have to, you know, play <laughs> games with my students that I feel called to do as a part of my call in ministry. Um, it's something that may be, may come less naturally to me individually. If that makes sense. Makes, makes total sense. And you, you hit on, what I was wondering about, there are, there are pieces of, well, next month in February, we're going to be talking about relationships and those dodgeball and, you know, the quote unquote games and fun things often are about simply being in relationship with, with the students that you're serving and being human and being the people that, that you are and simply having fun. There is no greater in the context of this conversation, there is no greater purpose. It's just have fun. That is the right. that is the purpose. As I've listened to you, before we jumped on to this uh, podcast, you were saying you were in the midst of a move. Hmm. I've learned that you're in finals in seminary. You're working in a student ministry. You're married. You, you've got a lot of, I'm just going to say, you, wouldn't may, you may not say it this way, but you've got a lot of balls in the air. So in the midst of... Uh, juggling competing demands, including a pandemic, and working in a church of good size, how do you stay focused on your purpose? You know, I think I'll go back to my my definition of courageous leadership. I really do feel that in this season, I have been blessed to be able to lean on the people around me. My senior pastor has been very gracious um, in allowing space and time, not only in this immediate time for the move and for for working on finals, but just in general through this season, recognizing that uh, it has taken a toll on our mental health, our, our spiritual health, um, and, and wanting us to prioritize that and, and encouraging us to prioritize that. And so I'm, I'm very grateful there. Um, and again, it, it, you know, very similarly in, um, 
at home with my wife. She is very good about encouraging me to to slow down when nece- when needed, uh, but also to to step up and and to you know get things get things done that need to get done. She has a good way of just doing that in love, doing that in kindness, uh, but keeping me on track, uh, which has been I've been very grateful for that. And I think too, uh, just just you know through the years, I've been blessed with various leaders and and disciplers who have taught me little tips and tricks. Um, I am a list maker. This sort of gets into, we'll talk about StrengthsFinder, uh, top five strengths in in a moment, but one of my my top five is Achiever. And that that definitely plays into, I like to make lists in part because I like to check things off of my list. And, but I do believe that that, uh, just keeping a daily planner of what is going on, what are the tasks that I need to accomplish today in order to make tomorrow that much better that that is one that I really feel like helps me to stay focused, stay organized. But I do really, and again, especially during this season, um, I'm just being very grateful for for the blessing of good coworkers, of good, you know, a loving spouse um, and and other yeah supporting uh, friends and family to help me to get through these things and to to you know what know what to uh, you know prioritize in that moment um, and how to be present um, and not focused on the yeah ten other things that I could be focused on. So before we move into those strengths. How do you help others stay focused on the purpose of student ministry? It's very clear that you can stay focused and you're, you're depending on the people around you. So how are you helping others keep their focus uh, in the work that you're doing? Absolutely. I, so I've been blessed, especially this fall with a number of great uh, youth ministry volunteers who have stepped in. We shifted our way of doing um, our typical Sunday evening youth ministry model um, and broke it down into smaller groups, which required just additional leadership. And that I've, I've been blown away by the, yeah, the parents and, and the non-parents who have stepped in and said, you know what, I, I care about the young people in our church and I want to help with that. And one of the things that I have tried to do throughout this fall, keeping in mind that we can't meet in and gather together in the same way, was to to develop a system of of dripping out training or dripping out ideas or concepts of youth ministry to then have just some small conversation, maybe, you know, exchanging a couple of texts. But this is something that I learned, um, again, from from somebody much wiser than me. But but instead of giving uh, my volunteers one start of the year, you know, this is all the things that you need to know and keep in mind for the next six months. I've tried to space it out little by little and keep it in front of them, you know, maybe once a month, maybe, uh, you know, once every six weeks, uh, just something to digest, something to think about in terms of what is going on in youth ministry. And, and you know, month to month, it's not a huge revelation. Um, it's not like all of my volunteers are suddenly like, ah, this is exactly how we're supposed to do youth ministry. But it has uh, even already um, encouraged some, some good conversation. Um, and I'm excited. I've been planning out some, uh, yeah, just some strategic topics, sort of like what you, the two of you are doing here to, to yeah, keep that, that fire stoked in, in my volunteers through this season. So you mentioned your Clifton strengths, and you and I have had a conversation, gosh, I think it might have been two years ago now at this point, about your your top five. And when you pointed to your achiever, and we're talking about lists, the, the question that I love asking folks who have that talent, who talk about making lists is, do you ever add things to a list just so you can check it off after you've already done it? <laughs> Yes, I my the first thing on my list each day is to make my list for the day. <laughs> <laughs> and and you all can't see it right now, but Tim's laughing right now, and that's usually what happens for folks that don't have that talent. They're like, "Why in the world would you do that?" And I'm right there with you, Jake. <laughs> It's like, oh, wait, I did something and I can check it off, but it wasn't on my list and it should have been, so I'm going to go back and and add it. Yeah. So for the purpose of our conversation, Jake's top five strengths are restorative, strategic, learner, communication, and achiever. And so I'm wondering in that, which of your talent themes help you to accomplish your goals? You've already, you've already touched a little bit on your achiever talent and that list making and that keeping you, you focused. Is there anything else as you think about your top five that helps you to accomplish what you're setting out to do? 
Well, Sarah, you mentioned that a couple of years ago, we had the opportunity to talk about this and, and you led our church staff uh, through just a yeah discovery process of, of yeah understanding what our top five strengths are and how they can work together. And I don't know if you remember this, but you told me that I was the only person on our staff who did not have a relational strength, <laughs> <laughs> and in, which was just, it was funny. I had never, I had done this a few years prior to when we had did this, done this on our staff and, and I had not seen the way it was broken down into the the four categories, mm-hmm. uh, but it was it was interesting to learn that I don't have relational strengths. Um, and being in youth ministry, you kind of want those, as we spoke to earlier. But I do believe that each one of my top five do do play a role in helping me to not only to connect with my students, but also to uh, to yeah to stay in touch with with the Lord and and follow what He is calling me to do. I think my strategic and my learner really play well together. Um, in se- in the sense that. I, I am in school right now, but I think that I, I learn in life situations. I'm, I'm very observant and I try to pay attention to what is going on in a situation, who's saying what, and, and sort of the way things are being said. And so I try to process those sorts of things and in, in order to uh, be, in order to be present with people in order to be attentive to um, the way that especially my students are feeling if they're you know coming to me with something that they need to talk about whether it's something to to celebrate or something to you know to to be a little bit more somber over i think that those two i i lean on those two to pay attention and to be present in in the moment and i believe communication is is a very healthy one i i Every time I come back to this, I'm a little surprised that I have the the strength of communication, but I do believe that it is one that is is vital in just again being aware, uh, being present in relationships, being um, able to understand and sort of convey that that empathy or that active listening. And so, so I think that I try to lean on all of them. The, my restorative strength is it is my number one, and it's something that I I think helps me to be a good team player. I've been told that I. Yeah, I just I I work towards peace, work towards cooperative, collaborative opportunities and situations, and you know, especially again, going back to working on a team, being being a leader with other people, people will inevitably disagree, and and yeah, I think it's it's helpful to um, have somebody on any team that can um, help to work through those kinds of problems because that's not a natural thing for everybody. I'm sitting here kind of cringing at the fact that what you remember from our conversation is me pointing out what you didn't have in your in your top five. But I'm also glad that you named that because part of what you've just illustrated that I want to name for the folks that are listening is just because in Jake's top five, he doesn't have one that falls into that relationship building domain doesn't mean that he can't build relationships. What you just heard from Jake is that he does that through the strengths that God has given him. He does that in strategic ways, in ways that are are learning, in ways that, you know, there are tasks that need to get done, and you do that through people. I heard relationships loud and clear when you were talking about your restorative strength and, and differing in terms of the way th- the ways that we come together around the table and the different opinions that can emerge. I want to reframe that for you, I guess. And also to to point out for our listeners, I I think if I'm remembering why I pointed that out was if I'm remembering correctly, the staff was had a lot of relationship building strengths. And what I remember noticing about your top five was that because of that, you stood out in a positive way as bringing something different to the team that the whole team needed. And in fact, I have, uh, yeah, sort of worn it as a mantra that, uh, you know what, that's, yeah, it, just as you mentioned, you know, you can still build relationships, even if your strengths don't necessarily fall into that domain. And yeah, it, it's it's a, something that I love, you know, love about my job and I love about the way that God is, has formed me and crafted me. Sometimes I'll have conversations with folks around strengths then and they won't have any, I'm going to say, exec- any talents in the executing theme. And they're like, I just can't get things done because I don't have any talents in the executing theme. Eh-eh, you're making an excuse. <laughs> you can get it done. It's just you're going to get it done either through influencing other people or through strategic thinking or through the relationships around you. And so it works across all of all of those domains. So, Jake, this um, new year, 2021, comes with some new opportunities. 
And we've talked a little bit about purpose. We've talked a little bit about strengths, holding those together. What are your goals or priorities um, for this new year or the next 90 days or so? Yeah, well, as we have mentioned, um, I'm still in seminary, but this spring is my final semester. And so that is, yeah, very exciting. (laughs) And, And that is sort of framed the way that I've thought about, especially the spring of 2021, um, I, I really want to finish well. Um, I think that's something that can be, and I've, I've seen it in my own life. It's something that as you see the finish line approaching, sometimes people want to, you know, start to invest in what's next, start to think what it, sort of what's beyond. Um, and I do want to take serious, you know, the classes that I'm taking and, and, but also to be, to continue to be present in um, the midst of this season um, to, to, rise to whatever sort of those challenges, both in school and, and in ministry um, that come up, because um, I don't want to write off the next 90 days or the next five months as just, oh, I'm looking towards the finish line. I'm trying to get to May. I'm trying to get to graduation. Because there's a lot that I believe God has in store for us in the early part of 2021, even though it will, you know, as we've mentioned and, and all experienced, it will look different and, and it will be um, uncomfortable at times and it will be challenging, I'm sure. But my my hope is that, you know, as we as we move towards, you know, being able to hopefully uh, combat and, and battle against this virus, that 2021 will start to look different. Um, and that, that, you know, I'm, I'm excited for what those differences are going to look like. But but again, I want to, to be present in the now, be present in what I'm doing um, so that I can finish this season well. As I'm listening to you talk about, you know, getting getting to that finish line, and holding that in intention or alongside of your purpose that you have named, often that requires courage because there are a million things that could pull you in a different direction. You've already pointed to some of the relationships in your leadership that are important to you. But I'm wondering if you could speak to what characteristics of other leaders specifically fuel your courage and help you to be more courageous. That's a really good question. I I've found that during my seminary career, I have learned best from professors who are passionate about what they are doing. I think that I like to believe that every seminary professor, every college professor is loves their loves their their subject and loves what they get to teach. I realize that maybe not is is not always the reality or it may not always be the reality in that season, but I found that I really gravitate towards people who are passionate about what it is that they are doing. I seek to embody that in my own life. I seek to, you know, to want to give myself fully to uh, the the projects that I'm working on, the ministry that I've invested in, the relationships in my life. And and again, you know, from season to season, that looks a little bit different. But I do find that I I am drawn to people who are are yeah live out their lives with passion. And even if that's a a subtle passion, I don't think passion always has to be um, loud and and big. Um, I think that passion can be steady um, and and constant and faithful. I'm I'm even just as I'm speaking right now, I'm reminded of, of Eugene Peterson's you know long long. Uh, obedience in the same direction. I forget exactly what the title is, uh, but just that that continued faithfulness, um, that uh, that you know, staying true. And and in this season, that's that's a bit of what I've felt called to. Um, that uh, you know, as as we have adapted and changed and moved online, recognizing that there are still there are still base things that are important uh, that need to happen in, in youth ministry that, that are beneficial for young people as they are growing closer to Christ. And, and those are the things I want to be passionate about. So Jake, I'm, you are intriguing to me because I'm learning from you. And so I, I'm, I'm grateful. What are some courageous decisions you're making right now? I'm hoping this is a courageous decision, but my, my goal, well, one of the things that our senior pastor has gifted us is the gift of some time away. She's asked each of us to take some time, not not you know vac- scheduled vacation or anything like that, but just take some time in between Christmas and New Year's um, to step away. And and my hope for that, my my what I hope is yeah, courageous decision is that is to to unplug um, almost entirely, um, to be able to turn my phone off, to be able to turn my email off, um, and to truly be present um, with my wife and with our new puppy. And, you know, any, anybody else that we may be fortunate enough to, to be able to spend time with, but, but during that time to truly unplug 
because I've I've found that even in even in times of rest, I've I've found that I'm on my phone more than I want to be, uh, playing silly games or uh, staying you know up to date on what's going on with Instagram or whatever is you know whatever. And I I don't love that um, in this moment, and and I I've found that that I you know in order to really find rest. I really want to, yeah. I want to to dis- disengage, to dis- to unplug. So, so I'm I'm looking forward to that. I I am nervous. You never know what's going to happen, but but I'm looking forward to that opportunity. I want I want the people who are listening to us to hear again part of what you've said, and that is part of your courageous decisions means that you're going to find some rest. That you're actually going to disengage from some of the technology, the electronics, and give yourself a chance to rest. That is truly a courageous decision in, 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 my, in my estimation. So thanks for bringing that to our attention. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, the number of people that I've been in conversation and we've had conversations like this with that have talked about you know simply being exhausted and – and they might not use the word exhausted, but tired or worn out. And yeah, you you reminded folks that, yeah, rest can be a courageous decision. So last question for you before we jump into the rapid fire questions. What do you celebrate God doing in your life or leadership in the past three, we'll say three to six months? Well, I, I keep, I feel like I just keep chirping on the same thing, but, but I, I really, really, really been grateful for um, the support and the, the um, willingness of my youth ministry volunteers. As things were changing, you know, rapidly this spring and this summer, we, like many other youth ministries, had to uh, pivot and cancel a mission trip that we had planned, a couple of trips actually that we had planned for the summer. But with the help and support of, of some of my volunteers, we were able to to craft a safe way to do a local youth missions week, which which I think was a big win in a lot of ways for our students and especially for our seniors, our graduating seniors. They there was an opportunity to celebrate them in a, a meaningful way at the end of that week that I think was really good, um, especially for yeah for people who lost a graduation opportunity. And so I, I really I I want to celebrate them. I can't say enough good things about the the yeah the support that I've received from my volunteer leaders. And I think too, just just the way that God continues to move, the way that God continues to show up. I I, I don't know that I ever would have been able to consciously verbalize this, but I I was worried when we shut down that things were going to sh- to shut down in a lot of way, and you know, in, in a spiritual sense. I and mean, I've been very grateful to be so wrong about that, and, and to see the ways that God is that moving in in my life and in you know the life of of my wife, um, who's been, yeah, stepping into new ministry opportunities as well. And, and in the lives of my students, just watching students who I've known for, um, going on five years now who are now, you know, driving and, and, you know, progressing, thinking about college. It's just been very neat to see that, um, yeah, that there, we are still moving forward, that God is still moving in the midst of what we are doing. I promise you, I won't title this episode, Grateful to be Wrong. <laughs> but there there certainly is joy in that. Are you yeah. ready for the rapid fire questions? As ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> These questions, I promise you, are intended to be fun, another opportunity for our listeners to hear from you and get to know you a little bit in a slightly different way. Okay. This this is a good one for someone who works with youth. What's your favorite snack food? Oh, uh, Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> is there a specific Sour Patch Kid that you like over the other, the specific flavor in the package? I don't think so. I was excited when the the blue one came. Right, that's the newest gang or you know member of the gang. But but I don't love the blue flavor, so that's that's underwhelming. But I love them all. <laughs> Sour Patch Kids. That you are the first person that we've asked that question to that has had that answer. So, what do people misunderstand about you? That I'm not Bob Ross. So this, I realize we're not <laughs> recording um, video for this, but I want to show you a picture that was given to me at our last year's youth Christmas party. So you can see, right? I've I've got dark hair. I've got dark beard. A, a member of our youth ministry team. 
superimposed my face onto a Bob Ross picture. <laughs> And it's been a oh, running that's joke awesome. in our youth ministry for a while now. That's uh, yeah, that our youth pastor is Bob Ross. And so <laughs> I am not, in fact, I'm very, I, I did very poorly in art class all through elementary school, but I have a great appreciation for him. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. What is the last thing that you read? The last thing that I read, other than the notes for this interview, <laughs> I am, well, I'm, okay, this is, this is going to sound nerdy, but I am working on finals right now and I'm taking a, one of my youth ministry polity classes. And so the last book that I read was the book of discipline. <laughs> You you right. now have two unique answers. <laughs> That's what I was getting ready to say. We haven't had that answer before either. <laughs> what brings you joy these days? I love my dog. We we like many other people got a a puppy in the midst of the pandemic, and he has been a challenge, uh, definitely. But I love the opportunity, especially on a day like today. I don't know how it is in Columbus, but. Down here in Cincinnati, we've got a little bit of sunshine, and just being able to go for a walk with my dog is has been very uh, joyful filled these days. This is the last question, and it it has three parts, and you can choose which part to to answer. And it's around music. What music brings you meaning, or motivates you, or brings you peace? Meaning, motivation, or peace? One of the things that I learned in college is that I really enjoy listening to music that does not have lyrics to it. So just instrumental music of, of various sorts, whether it's orchestral or more of the new, the, the house or the, uh, the, you know, the, the digital music. But I, there's a Pandora station called Explosions in the Sky that I really, really love. Um, and it brings me a lot of peace. It helps me to just sort of calm myself, to center myself. And it's, it's pretty good. So Awesome. Well, thank you, Jake. Thanks for taking time out of your schedule in the midst of finals and moving and ministry and pandemics and, 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 oh yes, we're recording this in the midst of Advent. So thank you. I am, I'm grateful for the opportunity to spend a little bit of time with you and also for the opportunity to redo a conversation that we had a couple of years ago that clearly I was redoing and didn't need to redo, but that's a whole nother story. Thank you. I, I am grateful. Is there any last word of wisdom that you would like to offer to our listeners, either around leadership, around courageous leadership, around pursuing your goals, purpose, anything that we've talked about today? You know, I think all the all the best things have hopefully already been said, but I, I do want to go back to what Tim, you know, talked about, I, you know, finding rest in this season. Um, and, and even when this episode airs in, in the early part of 2021, making that a priority because we've been in a marathon for a long time. Um, and I don't think it's going to be over by the time this episode airs. So, um, so continue to prioritize that, continue to make rest or make time for rest in your life. And yeah, I just want to say thank you to both of you for, for this great opportunity. Um, it's been, it's been a pleasure to get to chat with you and yeah, Sarah to, uh, to go back and revisit a conversation <laughs> that we had a few years ago. <laughs> Tim, any last words from you? Um, sure. Jake, you're the most re relational person I know that didn't come out in the, in the relation <laughs> quadrant of uh, strengths. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a pleasure and a joy to have you on LeaderCast today. And as, as I say to a lot of people, I've learned something today and I'm grateful for your witness. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jake. You got it, right? That one thing that we can all have that's really not a thing, it's the people around us. It's the people who support us, whether they're a team that we're in ministry with, whether it's your spouse, whether it's a dear friend, whether it's a family member, the people around us that help us to stay focused who remind us our special gift that we offer to the world, and most importantly, who keep us focused on our purpose. So my questions for you to reflect on this episode and take some action, it's the same question. I'm going to ask it in two different ways. And of course, it's a two-parter. The question is this, who are the people around you that help you stay focused on your purpose? And what is it that they do 
to help you stay focused. Maybe this week you'll reach out to one of those individuals and thank them. Thank them for being a part of your life. Thank them for being on this journey with you. Thank them for reminding you who you were created to be. And then I want you to turn that question around and ask yourself, who do you help stay focused on their purpose? What do they need from you to stay focused on their purpose? Perhaps those individuals you'll reach out to this week and simply ask them, How can I support you in staying focused on your purpose? There are your questions for this week. Once again, you can find the show notes for this page, including the questions that I just offered, along with the strengths that Jake named throughout this episode and some more resources that were mentioned throughout this episode. You can find it all on the Transforming Mission show notes page at transformingmission.org forward slash podcast. And once again, you're looking for episode 162. And remember, who you are is how you lead. Bye for now.